At this point, I think we need to bust the second popular myth. Popular myth number two, saddles evenly distribute weight. No, they don't. We can observe in this video how the movement of the horse's scapulae, ribs, back and pelvis all contribute to the movement of the saddle. Transient peak pressures are created by this movement in a well-fitted saddle in a predictable way. When panels are correctly fitted, they will attenuate some of this movement, but when the weight of the rider is added, the forces increase. In an ill-fitting saddle, its movement becomes more irregular. The saddle is too narrow and too curved for this flat-backed horse, causing a more unpredictable movement. The shape of the tree should follow the shape of the horse's back. Too flat on a dipped back can cause focal pressure at the rear of the saddle or bridging. An upward curve in the twist on a flat back can also cause bridging. Too curved can cause a rocking point in the central area. Too wide will cause the seat to tip downwards towards the pommel and the saddle may slip backwards. But as we can see in this example, too narrow will cause the seat to tip backwards. The lowest point of the horse's back should be aligned with the lowest point of the seat, which should appear level. Place a hand in the gullet underneath the head plate at the pommel and slide it down the tree points on each side. There should be a light, even contact. Too narrow will feel tighter near the point. Too wide will feel tighter near the head plate. By looking at these removable, changeable gullet plates, we, um, head plates, we can see that the um, effect of too wide is for it to be tighter at the top. The length and the angle of the points will depend on the saddle model, but should always accommodate the horse's conformation. The tree points should sit approximately 45 centimetres behind the scapulae, allowing for the backward rotation during protraction. Industry guidelines indicate that the length of the tree should not extend beyond the last rib, but currently there is no evidence behind this practice and many horses are comfortable in a slightly longer tree if it's otherwise well fitting. To locate T18, you can follow the line of the last rib upwards. You can count backwards from the sacroiliac joint or L6. And you can also check by feeling for the notch at the junction of L1. The weight bearing area of the panels should be in even contact and follow the shape of the back to create uniform distribution of pressure. Check the contact by sliding the hand under the panels along their length. The contact should feel even. The padding should be soft and forgiving enough to allow for asymmetry of the shoulders. A slight gap or bridge in the central area of the panel accommodates lifting and rounding of the back when the horse is being ridden. Inducing a slight thoracic lift manually should remove the effect of bridging to give an even contact. The length should, of the panel should extend beyond the tree to help reduce focal pressure, and it may extend slightly beyond the last rib. The width should not extend beyond the margins of the longissimus dorsi muscle. An excessively flared rear gusset may create focal pressure on the lumbar transverse processes or the ribs. With the longissimus dorsi muscle peeled back, it's possible to see the rib shelf. Peak pressures over the edge will cause discomfort or pain. Next, assess the stability of the saddle with the girth fastened. The saddle should not move excessively in any direction when a rotational force is applied. Place one hand on the pommel 
and the other on the cantle. Push the saddle from side to side across the back. The saddle should not rotate across the midline or roll. Press downwards alternately on the pommel and on the cantle. The saddle should not rock or pitch from front to back. Apply diagonal pressure across the saddle by simultaneously pushing one hand away and pulling the other inwards. The saddle should not twist or yaw. When the tree is correctly positioned on the back, the billet should hang vertically over the girth groove, the narrowest part of the thorax above the sternum. If the billets are angled, they'll pull the saddle out of position when the girth is tightened and the horse moves. A sliding V attachment of the billets allows flexibility of the positioning by self-adjusting the angle to accommodate the horse's conformation.